Book One, Chapter Three of The Adventures of Gil Blas of Santillane by Alain Rene Lesage, translated by Tobias Smollett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book One, Chapter Three the muleteer's temptation on the road its consequences and the situation of gil blas between scylla and charybdis i was not the only passenger there were two young gentlemen of pena flor a little chorister of mandagnedo who was travelling about the country and a young tradesman of astorga returning home from verco with his new married wife we soon got acquainted and exchanged the usual confidence of travellers telling one another whence we came and whither we were going the bride was young enough but so dark complexioned with so little of what a man likes to look at in a woman that i did not think her worth the trouble but she had youth and a good crummy person on her side and the muleteer being rather less nice in his taste was resolved to try if he could not get into her good graces this pretty project occupied his ingenuity during the whole day but he deferred the execution till we should get to cacabellos the last place where we were to stop on the road we alighted at an inn in the outskirts of the town a quiet convenient place with a landlord who never troubled himself about other people's concerns we were ushered into a private room and got our supper snugly but just as the cloth was taken away in comes our carrier in a furious passion death and the devil i have been robbed here had i a hundred pistoles in my purse but i will have them back again i am going for a magistrate and those gentry will not take a joke upon such serious subjects you will all be put to the rack unless you confess and give back the money the fellow played his part very naturally and burst out of the room leaving us in a terrible fright we had none of us the least suspicion of the trick and being all strangers were afraid of one another i looked askance at the little chorister and he perhaps had no better opinion of me besides we were all a pack of greenhorns and were quite unacquainted with the routine of business on these occasions we were fools enough to believe that the torture would be the very first stage of our examination with this dread upon our spirits we all made for the door some effected their escape into the street others into the garden but the whole party preferred the discretion of running away to the valour of standing their ground the young tradesman of astorga had as great an objection to bone twisting as the rest of us so he did as aeneas and many another good husband has done before him ran away and left his wife behind at that critical moment the muleteer as i was told afterwards who had not half so much sense of decency as his own mules delighted at the success of his stratagem began moving his motives to the citizen's wife but this lucrece of the asturias borrowing the chastity of a saint from the ugliness of the devil who tempted her defended her sweet person tooth and nail and showed she was in earnest about it by the noise she made the patrol who happened to be passing by the inn at the time and knew that the neighbourhood required a little looking after took the liberty of just asking the cause of the disturbance the landlord who was trying if he could not sing in the kitchen louder than she could scream in the parlour and swore he heard no music but his own was at last obliged to introduce the myrmidons of the police to the distressed lady just in time to rescue her from the necessity of a surrender at discretion the head officer a coarse fellow without an atom of feeling for the tender passion no sooner saw the game that was playing than he gave the amorous muleteer five or six blows with the butt-end of his halberd representing to him the indecency of his conduct in terms quite as offensive to modesty as the naughty propensity which had called forth his virtuous indignation neither did he stop here but laid hold of the culprit and carried plaintiff and defendant before the magistrate the former with her charms all heightened by the discomposure of her dress went eagerly to try their effect in obtaining justice for the outrage they had sustained 
his worship heard at least one party and after solemn deliberation pronounced the offence to be of a most heinous nature he ordered him to be stripped and to receive a competent number of lashes in his presence the conclusion of the sentence was that if the endymion of our asturian diana was not forthcoming the next day a couple of guards should escort the disconsolate goddess to the town of astorga at the expense of this mule-driving acteon for my part being probably more terrified than the rest of the party i got into the fields scampering over hedge and ditch through enclosures and across commons till i found myself hard by a forest i was just going for concealment to ensconce myself in the very heart of the thicket when two men on horseback rode across me crying who goes there as my alarm prevented me from giving them an immediate answer they came to close quarters and holding each of them a pistol to my throat required me to give an account of myself who i was whence i came what business i had in that forest and above all not to tell a lie about it their rough interrogatives were according to my notion little better than the rack with which our friend the muleteer had offered to treat us i represented myself however as a young man on my way from oviedo to salamanca told the story of our late fright and faithfully attributed my running away in such a hurry to the dread of a worse exercise under the torture they burst into an immoderate fit of laughter at my simplicity and one of them said take heart my little friend come along with us and do not be afraid we will put you in a place where the devil shall not find you at these words he took me up behind him and we darted into the forest i did not know what to think of this odd meeting yet on the whole i could not well be worse off than before if these gentry thought i to myself had been thieves they would have robbed and perhaps murdered me depend on it they are a couple of good honest country gentlemen in this neighbourhood who seeing me frightened have taken compassion on me and mean to carry me home with them and make me comfortable but these visions did not last long after turning and winding backward and forward in deep silence we found ourselves at the foot of a hill where we dismounted this is our abode said one of these sequestered gentlemen i looked about in all directions but the deuce a bit of either house or cottage not a vestige of human habitation the two men in the meantime raised a great wooden trap covered with earth and briars to conceal the entrance of a long shelving passage underground to which from habits the poor beasts took very kindly of their own accord their masters kept tight hold of me and let the trap down after them thus was the worthy nephew of my uncle perez caught just for all the world as you would catch a rat End of Book One, Chapter Three.